Hello, I'm Greg Rodkay of Rodkay Mods, and welcome to Episode 8 of Season 3 of my Mac Pro Series. In today's episode, we'll be showing you how to install a much more powerful graphics card into your Mac Pro. And uh, the way we are going to be doing that is by doing the Pixless mod. And we will be following a tutorial done by Jay Vry. Now, he's not the originator of the Pixless mod but he did a very, very substantial tutorial on how to do it on his blog, the um, houseofmoth.com. And in that um, article, he talks about how to do it on all uh, classic Mac Pros, the aluminum towers. Um, but it, it's this episode's will be based on the 4,1, 5,1 Mac Pros. But if you watch this video, it will help you get an understanding on how to do it from the 1 to comma 1 to 3 comma 1s also. Now, why would you need to do Pixlus? Um, that is uh, if you're using a more powerful GPU that needs more than two 6 pins. Uh, for instance, we right here have a Vega 56 uh, Radeon card here. And um, I am going to be installing this into my Mac Pro 4 comma 1 flash to 5 comma 1. It's got two 8-pin power connectors on it. So we have to run these cable, this wire right here from the power supply into this card. And um, we'll be talking more about that in a second. But uh, before we continue on, I would like to mention, um, hey, maybe you're looking to save a little money up to buy one of these Mac Pros. Maybe you have a bunch of Apple products you'd like to get rid of. If you go to sellyourmac.com and, um, well anyway, just follow this um, quick commercial that I filmed a while back and um, I'll see you in a second. Hi, are you looking to sell an Intel Mac like one of these? Maybe you're looking to sell your old iPhone like one of these. If you go to sellyourmac.com slash rutkmods, link in the description, and sell your device, they'll even send you a free shipping label if you live in the United States of America. And they'll take devices from anywhere in the world. So just head to sellyourmac.com slash rutkmods and sell your device. I'll appreciate it, and they will too. And hey, you'll be making some money, and they do it at top dollar. So go there and check them out. Anyway, welcome back. Yeah, so in today's episode, we'll be replacing my 4870 right here, which is not metal supported and ran off of two six pins with a Vega 56 right here. Currently, my Mac Pro has a GT120 in it, which I'm going to be using for a backup card, and I'll be sending this off to a friend. But in today's episode, we'll be showing you how to do the Pixless mod, how to install these wires with um, some um, couplers, and how to get it going. So let's get to it. Okay, so before we continue, I thought I'd quickly show you what has changed in the system since the last time you guys saw it. And basically, I put $74 worth of 1333 DDR3 in it. So now I have um, 48 gigs of 1333 DDR3 ECC RAM. And uh, yes, it does say 1066, but that's because the current CPUs, the original ones, don't support 1333. When I upgrade that, we'll have these running at 1333. And it works great. Um, also, I downgraded to a GT120 so I could have um, a single slot card. The problem is this card uh, is really, really messed up, as we can see down here. Uh, I have it hooked up with the um, mini display port, and um, the mini display port I only have one adapter for, and uh, the adapter is a little messed up. And that's the only way I can get video out of the system to my cinema display because the DVI port on the card is dead. And um, I almost think the uh, <laughs> mini display port is also not working super great either. And the card is artifacting really bad. It does a lot of blue artifacting. If you look at the edge of the screen, you can see it a little bit. Darker textures, you can see it like down in here and stuff. 
you know, I, I know you guys aren't too super interested about that, but I need this card as a backup, so I had to order another one. I didn't know this one was dead. Um, it, it's essentially dead, but it does show the, enough display for me to do what I'm doing right now. So anyway, guys, um, the tutorial we will be following today is Jay Vry's The House of Moth page um, on the Pixelist mod. Here is the link right here. We'll have that in the description. And basically this whole tutorial right here will show you what you need. And he's actually, I think, updated it since I started following the tutorial. And um, it's changed a bit. Um, he now has a kit, which he didn't have before, I don't believe, right here. So if you get all this, you can do it yourself. Uh, I followed and got um, the parts you need section here. Um, and of course, everything you'll need will be on his page. And basically, um, you got you need your GPU. I've got that. Got the uh, cable you need right here. Um, even though it's coming from China, it only took like a week and a half or two weeks, if that, to get to my house. It's pretty darn quick. So uh, you could do that, or uh, you could also uh, pull one from a modular power supply, but then you have to also figure out which wires go where. This is great because the wires are already colorized and stuff, and anyway. So yeah, we'll be following this whole thing right here. Um, and basically, this all should help you out. Um, and show you everything you need to do. And we'll be following all this tutorial step by step. Um, and if you do have a newer Mac, I mean an older Mac Pro, he even has a section in here somewhere. Where is it? It's here somewhere. Anyway, he has a section in here uh, for the 1, 1 through 3, 1 users. Uh, okay, here it is right here. That's that's it right there. So if you need to do it for the one comma one three comma one, you can follow this and do it. But we'll be doing the four comma one five comma one mod here. So we will be setting up the system and pulling it apart and stuff. And basically that's it. So I will uh, get everything I need together and start pulling apart the system. So first off, you want to take the side panel off your Mac Pro, remove your graphics card and any of the power cables you have. Okay, I left the original wires in here even though I don't need them anymore. So basically what you'll want to do is remove these, the bracket holders, and while you're at it, you might as well take out any other cards so they just don't fall out. So we'll pull that out. We'll hold, pull out the slot blanks just so they don't fall onto anything here. And then to remove your graphics card, you need to press this button in and pull back like that. And that unlocks the graphics card. Then it will pull right out like that. And there we go. Next, you'll want to take the power cables out because you're not going to need them anymore like that and there we go we have that empty now all the surgery we need to do will be up in the optical drive bay and we'll have to take the uh, original power supply out eventually but first let's pull out the optical drive bay here unplug it like so and pull that out and now we need to remove this panel right up in here. There's two Phillips head screws. You take that off and then we can get to the power supply wires and start pulling the power supply. Okay, so since this has been months in the making and I just haven't paid attention to anything um, about this, uh, I didn't realize that uh, Jay's tutorial uh, talks multiple times about needing a pair of wire crimpers which I don't have. <laughs> so if you want to follow the Quick Connect uh, tutorial on uh, how to do this, uh, follow Jay's uh, tutorial. But um, if you want to do it the, uh, what I think might look nicer if I do it properly uh, way of doing it, 
Uh, follow my tutorial and either way this will help you out doing it in the end goal here. So basically what I'm going to do is <sighs> cut the wires, solder them together, and heat shrink them together and uh, hopefully make it nice. I don't know if these are the right thickness. I might have to go get my other uh, shrink tubing, but uh, I'll be soldering them all together. Um, so this should be quite interesting. So here we go. Okay, so I did forget to mention that you will also want to uh, remove the hard drive bays here. Get them all out of the way here. Uh, it just helps get everything um, more room. So anyway, what I need to do now is take a screwdriver and remove these two screws to get this panel out. Okay, so you're going to need what appears to be a number two Phillips. Okay, once you get the screws out, the panel will fall down and come forward. And there you have your power supply cables. And what you need to do next is clean the dust that you uh, see around the area. Then you can actually unhook this if you'd like. Maybe. By squeezing the sides and pulling up on it like that. Now your power supply is disconnected. Next you want to go over here and underneath are four screws holding the power supply in. So I will be tilting this sideways and then we'll be showing you where those screws are. Okay so next you want to remove these four hex screws. They appear to be two millimeter hex um, and it's this screw, that screw, that screw, and that screw. Now, Jay recommend using an extension for this, which I have, but I'm going to risk it. Uh, I hope I can do this without breaking something. Hey, uh, an extension would be handy because I can't even turn it. Uh, try this one. Wow, factory torque is uh, a pain. Alrighty then. So I am going to. Uh, Try to figure out how to get that to work. I'll be right back. Okay, now we have an extension. Let's try this again. Ha! <laughs> ha! Um, that's annoying. Jay, how did you do this with an extension? All right, new plan. Okay, so word of warning, I am about to show you blood. Um, I hope this isn't graphic for you, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I figured out a way to get them loose, and it requires a pair of pliers and uh, the screwdriver. Uh, be careful not to run your hand or fingers across that metal PCI bracket there because it's 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 quite sharp. Uh, it uh, hurts like a dickens, I'll tell you that much. But basically what I did, and uh, the extension method's probably safer, but um, is you put it in here, then you grab it, and you start torquing it. Like that, and the screw starts loosening. So I'm going to get the last two screws and bleed everywhere. And uh, I'll be right back with a, a nice band-aid and stuff. Okay, so at this point you'll want to stand your Mac Pro back up. Make sure that the cable is disconnected. And then you just want to grab the power supply and slowly move it forward like this. And then it should start sliding out. Maybe. How does it do that? And then it should start sliding out. Okay, 
say crap. <laughs> Sorry, this confusing me. Okay, you grab it like this, and it will start pulling towards you. And then you want to help feed the wire through the uh, cage here, like so, and the power supply will keep coming out as we can see here. This would be a great time to clean your power supply if you haven't yet. Um, the top of this one's really dusty as we can see here. So yeah. But anyway, just keep feeding the wires through and rocking this out. And it will eventually come loose. And as we can see here, the wire's about to slip through there. And we are out. And here is the power supply right here. So now you can set your Mac Pro to the side and we can continue on with uh, what to do with the power supply. Okay, so here we have our power supply taken out. I just finished cleaning it as best as possible. Uh, of course, don't open your power supply uh, because you could electrocute yourself, but um, you can clean the outside of the case. Maybe run some uh, compressed air through it to blow out some um, but I wouldn't recommend opening it even if you have a lot of experience with power supplies but still anyway getting back to the point here uh, our next step is to remove this piece of tape that's right here it's uh, going to be on there really tight but um, this piece of tape which I don't even know how it's really connected on here Anyway, you're supposed to remove it, and it's actually coming off pretty nicely. Here we go. Just like that, it will peel right off. This piece of tape here just keeps the wires uniform. And basically, this is a, um, I'll show you the diagram really quick on what Jay did. Um, where you want to put the wires is within this general area right here, okay? Nowhere past that, otherwise the power cable right here will not reach the full length. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to be connecting these wires to these wires on the ends, not the center ones, okay? And I'll show you a quick diagram of which is which. Okay, on the diagram the yellow wires will be the 12 volts and the blue wires will be the ground. These would be blue, these two are blue, so these are both grounds here. And then the um, 12 volts are these wires right here and right here, okay? So you'll want to try to get as much of this glue off as you can by scraping it off or using something to help you out here. Um, once you do that, you'll want to start doing the taps. Now if you're doing the taps, follow Jay's tutorial. If you're doing it the way I'm doing it, stick around. This is going to be uh, fun. <laughs> so yeah, basically I'm going to be stripping these wires, uh, cutting these wires, and splicing them together. So that's going to be fun. Um, I can't really mess with the length too much, so um, it's going to be fun. So yeah, we'll um, continue on from there. Okay, so next thing. If you're doing the soldering method, I would recommend you running the wire up through this hole up in here. Um, it's right at the corner of the optical drive right here where the SATA cable comes out right there, if you can see it. I would recommend running the wire up first uh, before you start soldering it on and running it out the side of the case like this and uh, having the power supply in close proximity. This is going to be a pain in the rear end, but um, that's the only easy way to get it in here. Otherwise, you might have to make the hole a little bit bigger or risk breaking the power connectors. This is going to be fun. Um, you know, uh, it'd be easier to use the quick connect because what you do is basically you put the power supply back in and then connect the wires, but, um, well, we can't do that. So this is going to be semi-permanent uh, for me. Hopefully I do it right on the first try. So here I go. 
Oh yeah, you'll also want to run the wire through here, which is going to make it even more fun. Uh, yeah, I, I really wish I'd remembered the crimpers. Um, so, um, this may not work. <laughs> uh, because now it, it hangs in midair. So, um, I might be able to get creative. Let's see. So basically, I came to the solution of putting the side panel on the side of the Mac Pro so I don't drip solder into it. AKA, follow Jay's tutorial on newing taps because this is going to be a nightmare. And, um, well, basically, you guys, I would hope, know how to cut, strip, and uh, solder and shrink tube wires. Um, this is going to be so complex, I really don't think I can film it. In fact, I'm probably going to break something. So, um, I'll show you guys what the end result looks like. Okay, so that moment when you realize that your heat shrink tubing is way too small and it won't fit over everything. I gave up and uh, soldered the connection on and uh, electrical taped it together. I think it will be okay. It's nice and sealed. It's not going to peel. And it's, it's on there. It's not going to come off. So now I'm just peeling some of the shielding off of the wires, soldering it on, and uh, doing it like that. It's, it doesn't look as pretty, but it should in theory work. Update, I'm getting ready to solder the first 12 volt line. Basically, uh, I'm giving you a warning, please don't do the soldering method. This is a pain in the rear end. Unless you have a lot longer power cable, um, this, is, this is a pain. All right, so here we go. It took me about an hour because of the uh, weird angle I had to do this at. And um, needless to say, once again, I tell you, just, yeah, don't solder these. these. That's a pain in the rear end. But as we can see, it is now all put in. Everything is double wrapped. And um, it's, it's not going anywhere. So now I've got to figure out a way to move this panel and set the power supply in while tilting this forward. Um, that's, I don't think I can film that. So basically I'll be pulling this wire through and this wire through while tilting it and well it, it's going to be fun but as we can see here it doesn't look awful it doesn't look great but hey that metal panels will be covering it so yeah here we go and there is the finished product plugged in with plenty of slack left on the cable which has been fed through. We'll show you it more in detail, but right now I'm going to screw the power supply in and uh, put this metal plate back in and then we'll continue on with the Pixlist mod. Quick tip for putting the screws back in the power supply is it might be beneficial for you to actually flip it upside down to actually be able to get the uh, power supply to align because it is a challenge to get it to align properly. But once it's done, it's done and now the power supply is in there nice and good. Okay, so here's the finished product. As we can see, everything tucked up neatly in there. You can't tell I actually even added anything. And this all looks pretty much factory now as we can see here. And it looks pretty good. And we have plenty of slack on this cable right here which we can plug into our card right there. So that's awesome. So now I am going to put the optical drive back in and all the cards and we'll um, actually uh, share in the experience of plugging the eight pins into the Vega 56. So here we go. plugged in and it looks really cool now I can uh, hook up and see how it works and uh, to do that I need my 
display port to DVI adapter here for my Cinema display. Alright. It turned itself on automatically, which is a bit of annoying. But let's see if it actually does work. So we'll turn this off. See if it starts showing a video in a second. I haven't actually tested this card and I've had it a few months. I'm hoping it works. It bonged and it is still glowing. So we just gotta wait for it to start booting up. It's currently running High Sierra as you guys saw. High Sierra should have Vega 56 drivers. So it should work. Hey! That's a good sign. Here we go guys. About this Mac. Here we go. Oops. Here we go. Vega 56, 8 gigs of RAM. Graphics and displays. Vega 56. And supports metal. And everything seems to be working great. And that's how you do the uh, Pixless mod improperly, of course. Um, but that's how you do the Pixless mod. So, uh, one second, I am going to disconnect the camera here and we'll go over this one quick time. And here we go, guys, with the Vega 56 running. All the fans are on. You can see the Pixless mod going up into there. And it looks like it could have been done that way by the factory. Yeah, I would call that successful, guys. And I'm very happy because this is working great, as we can see there. Um, I'm excited because I can now finally start to use this system. I'll uh, be moving the uh, SSHD for my 3.1 into this for now. Uh, I will eventually probably be going to um, AHCI. I mean, um, uh, NVMe and I'll be showing you guys a video on how to set up your system for that and uh, I may put a single slot card in here for the boot screens but right now it's probably not that important of a thing um, right now it's running High Sierra it will be running Mojave very shortly again um, and I'm really excited about this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, I hope the video helped you see how to do it improperly of course. I, I wouldn't recommend soldering it but it did work as you can see. It's working. <laughs> but um, I hope it helps you learn how to do the Pixless mod so you can run a very powerful card in your system properly because remember you can't put uh, two eight pins on two six pins. It does not work. So yeah. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, don't forget now I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. There is a, a link at the end of the video and in the description. And also don't forget that uh, I am supported by SellYourMac.com. SellYourMac.com slash mods as you saw earlier. And uh, once again thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and uh, everyone that believes in me and helps keep this channel going. Oh, and um, by the way, Merry Christmas to everyone. I'll be releasing this probably um, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So have a very Merry Christmas and um, uh, happy holidays for whatever other holiday you may um, celebrate. Anyway, so uh, thank you guys for watching and this has been a Rutke Mods video.